Okay, there's a couple of graphs there that you can read, um, and you know you can feel free to graph these, and I give you a description below. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next thing on finding where graphs cross the x and y axis. Uh, if you want to find the x-intercepts, that's where the graph crosses the x-axis. Just set y equal to 0 and solve for x. If you want to find the y-intercepts, where the graph crosses the y-axis, set x equals 0 and solve for y. Now, most of the time um, with these, you're going to get maybe one or two or three x-intercepts, but since most of these are functions, which we'll talk about later, um, you won't it won't cross the y axis more than once, if at all. So let's take a look at um, this example. So y equals x cubed minus 4x. If I want to find the x-intercept, I want to let y equal 0. So that means I'm going to solve this equation x cubed minus 4x equals 0. Now, if I factor an x out of this, I get x times x squared minus 4 equals 0. And then if I factor x squared minus 4, that's going to give me x times x plus 2 times x minus 2. And basically, you should know how to set x equal to 0 to get x equal 0, set x plus 2 equal to 0 to get x equal negative 2, and then set x minus 2 equal to 0 and solve it to get x equal 2. So your intercepts, your x-intercepts are 0, 0, negative 2, 0, and 2, 0. And I challenge you to go ahead and graph this uh, on a graphing utility. You can go to a place called desmos.com or graph it on your calculator, and you'll see that this graph crosses the x-axis actually at these three points. Um, now, to get the y-intercept, you let x be 0. So if I go up here and let x be 0, I get 0 cubed minus 4 times 0, so which is just going to be 0. So the only y-intercept is at the point 0, 0. Okay, here's another one. To find the x-intercept, I let y equal 0. So that's going to just give me, it's going to make this term disappear, and I get 3x equals 10, or x equals 10 thirds. So the x-intercept is the point 10 thirds, 0. The y-intercept, if I let x be 0, I get minus 5y equals 10, and then divide by negative 5, and I get y equal negative 2. So this goes through the point 0, negative 2. Now this graph is a line, and if you were to graph this line, you would see that it crosses the x-axis at 10 thirds, and it crosses the y-axis where y is negative 2. The x-intercept here, let um, y be 0, and you get 0 equals the absolute value of x minus 2. You can move the minus 2 to the other side, it becomes a plus 2. So you would get 2 equals absolute value of x. I just turned it around and made it absolute value of x equals 2. So based on the definition of absolute value, that means x can be plus or minus 2. So that means that the point negative 2, 0 and the point 2, 0 are uh, x-intercepts. Now, as far as the, um, the y-intercept, if I let x be 0, I get the absolute value of 0 minus 2. Well, that's just 0 minus 2, which is just negative 2. So I get 0, negative 2. So this has uh, two different x-intercepts, and then it also crosses the y-axis at one place. Uh, here's the last one. Here, if you let y equal 0, then you get 0 equals 2x squared plus x minus 6. Or if we turn that around, 2x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. And then you can factor this into 2x minus 3 and x plus 2. Make sure you know how to factor. And then uh, if you set the first factor equal to 0, you get x equal 3 halves. If you set the second factor equal to 0 and solve, you get x equal negative 2. So the x-intercept would be at, net, at 3 halves 0 and negative 2, 0. The y-intercept, if you let x be 0, you'll just get negative 6. So the y-intercept is the point 0, negative 6. Now, what you should also do is make sure that you can graph on a calculator or a graphing utility um, like desmos.com. Now, remember, you can't use a computer program on most uh, final exams, but, uh, but, you know, if you don't have your calculator handy, you can obviously uh, graph on a computer program online.
okay so make sure you, I've given you three three uh, functions here or three equations here and then you can uh, graph each of these and see if you get a picture similar to mine okay the last thing I want to talk about uh, is graphing circles and uh, well that's not the last thing but but let me just show you the the formula the formula for a circle actually comes from the distance formula between two points where one point is the center of a circle and another point is a point on the edge of the circle but I'm not going to get into that let me just give it go ahead and give you the formula this is the formula for the equation of a circle this is called the standard form and basically the point HK is the center of the circle and R is the radius so if you're given um, this x plus 5 quantity squared plus y minus 3 quantity squared equals 36 well it satisfies this form because really this x plus 5 you could say that's x minus negative 5 so the h value is negative 5 and this is y minus 3 so the k value is 3 so the center would be the point negative 5 3 and then um, r r squared I mean would be 36 so this constant has to be 36 so that means the radius is the square root of that which would just be 6 now you can look at the second one and do it you can see here that there's no h value here so the x value of the center would be 0 and then the the k or y value of the center would be negative 2 and the radius would just be the square root of 47 um, here's another one um, we have a center at negative 2 7 and radius 5 let's see if we can find the equation so I would do X actually that should be a minus okay so I would have X minus negative 2 quantity squared which turns out to be X plus 2 quantity squared and then since K is 7 I'd have Y minus 7 quantity squared so that would give me this and then the radius 5 I would square the radius to get 25 so there's the standard form equation for that okay um, let's take a look at this one for this one let's say we have a circle and let's say the center is right here this is the point uh, negative 1 2 okay let's see if I can squeeze that in there and let's say this point is the point 3 4 don't worry about whether it matches up the way it's supposed to all right so this line segment is the radius well since this is the center of the circle and this is a point on the circle then I know the radius would have to be the distance between the center to this point so the radius I could just use the distance formula to get radius so the radius would be 3 minus negative 1 squared plus 4 minus 2 quantity squared and then remember the radius is the square root of all that so it's the square root of all that using the distance formula so that would be 4 squared plus 4 I mean plus 2 squared which is 16 plus 4 under the square root so it's square root of 20 so the radius is square root of 20 but for the formula we need the radius squared so if we square the radius we just get 20 without the radical so now I know the center is negative 1 2 I know the radius squared is 20 so now I can do x minus negative 1 quantity squared so that's x plus 1 squared plus y minus 2 quantity squared equals the radius squared which is 20 and that gives me the standard form okay um, if you are given the equation in general form and asked to put it in standard form basically what you have to do is find the constant and make and get the constant over to the other side so I kicked it over here and changed its sign and then I want to get the these two x terms together and these two y terms together and then you might remember how you can complete the square to make this a perfect square trinomial and this a perfect square trinomial so what you do is you take half a negative six which is negative three and you square it so that gives me nine so I add nine here to make this that makes this a perfect square trinomial and I also add nine on the other side and then to complete the square for this one I take half of four which is two and I square it and I get 4 so I add 4 here and that makes that a perfect square trinomial and of course I have to add 4 to the other side 
Now, since this is a perfect square trinomial, it factors into x minus 3 quantity squared. And since this is a perfect square trinomial, it's going to factor as y plus 2 quantity squared. And then when I add these three numbers together, I get 28. So now I've got it in standard form. And I can read from this that the center is, the x value of the center is 3, the y value of the center is negative 2, and the radius is the square root of 28, which is 2 square root of 7. Okay? Another thing we need to be able to do is to find uh, points of intersection between two graphs. So if I have y equal x cubed and y equal 9x, and I want to know where they intersect. Basically, all I have to do is do a substitution. I can substitute from this graph into this one, and then I would get x cubed equals 9x. And I think from there you know how to solve it. Move the 9x across then completely factor it, and it actually factors into x times x minus 3 times x plus 3, and then set each of those factors equal to 0, and you get 0, negative 3, and 3. But then you got to get the corresponding y values. So if you put 0, just go back to either one of these equations. Let's say we go back to the second one, y equal 9x. If you plug 0 in for x, you're going to get 0 for y. If you plug 3 in for x, you're going to get 27 for y. If you plug negative 3 in for x, you're going to get negative 27 for y. So these two graphs actually intersect at three points. And graph these two on a graphing utility and look for where they intersect, and you should see those three points of intersection. Okay, now these two, I went ahead and lined them up on top of one another because I noticed if I add these together, the y's will cancel. So if I add them together, I get x squared plus 2x on the left, and I get 6 plus 2, which is 8 on the right, and the y is canceled. So I get x squared plus 2x equals 8, and then subtract 8, and then you can just uh, factor this and solve for x. So x is negative 4 and 2, and then you can plug these numbers into one of these equations. It uh, doesn't matter which one. But plug, like plug negative 4 in here for x and solve for y, and you'll get y is 10. And then plug 2 in for x and solve for y, and you'll get y is negative 2. So these two graphs actually intersect at these two points. And again, go ahead and graph these equations on a graphing utility and identify the two points where the two graphs intersect. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of examples, but I don't have time to do both. But... Go ahead and freeze the video and see how I solve the break-even analysis problem for uh, revenue and cost. And then I'll show you how to solve uh, supply and demand. Okay, so when supply and demand, you generally have a demand equation that represents the consumer demand based on it's the, it's, the, it's the relationship between the price and the quantity that consumers are willing to consume. And then you have a supply equation, and the supply equation is based on the price and the number uh, a supplier is willing to supply. Well, if you're given a supply equation like this and a demand equation like this, what you can find is something called the equilibrium point. So you can find where supply meets demand. And the way you do it is you just set these two equal. So notice here I'm going to take this, the supply equation, and set it equal to the demand equation. And so when you set those equal, and then you're just going to solve for Q. So go through the arithmetic here. You get 0.27Q equals 3.24. Divide by 0.27 and you get 12. And then you can plug 12 into either one of your supply or demand equations to get the price. So basically we find that the supply and demand equations intersect at the point 12 and 1.6. So in, so theoretically this is where your supply meets demand. So in other words the amount that you're willing to supply as a supplier the consumers will consume that same amount. So basically, the price should be set at $1.60 for supply to meet the demand. And that's pretty much it on this section, and I'll see you on the next section.